Well, it's official. The dead internet theory is fully, fully confirmed and proven. According to the 2025 bad bot report from uh, a company named Imperva, they've been putting these out for, for some years now, 51%, so a little over half, of all of the traffic on the internet is from non-human sources. <laughs> So that means that fifth, only 49% of the traffic that an average website or web service gets is from an actual person. The rest of it is all bots. It's all, it's all uh, AI data mining. It's all uh, phishing bots, data scraping and data mining bots. It's just bots. Bots pretending to be people posting stuff. It's just bots. It's bots doing bot things and sucking up the bandwidth and server time across the whole world. 51%. Check out this chart. This is crazy. This is crazy. Um, so they, they categorize the bad bot report categorizes all different types of non-human traffic into two categories, bad bots and good bots, right? I mean, good bots are things that are, um, every, they're, they're being upfront about what they're doing. They're, they're pulling information together. They're syncing data between things. They're, they're posting things, uh, to, uh, block blogs or social media sites, but they're doing it in a very transparent way. Like they're saying, hey, uh, this is just an aggregation of data type of bot, that sort of thing. Um, and, but and then there's bad bots, right? And you can all imagine what a bad bot does. A bad bot does any number of malicious things from hacking and phishing attempts and data mining and and uh, scraping and data gathering that's not that hasn't been approved of by a site operator, all sorts of different things. Bad bots accounts for 30 37% of all of the internet traffic. <laughs> and in, my, in my mind, that's almost the bigger story here than just that most traffic on the internet is now non-human. I mean, we, we, we kind of get guessed that, right? Like, <laughs> If any of you have been on the internet over the last few years, you've kind of thought, well, maybe there's something to this whole dead internet theory, because it seems like whether we're talking about social media or the the automated spam emails or uh, the weird traffic, if any of you run your own website and you watch the, the traffic logs of the strange bot related traffic that's coming in, you're like, OK, most of the traffic out there is probably not coming from a real person. I get it. I'm on board with that. But the fact that a full 37% of them can be easily quantified as being malicious, right? Hiding what they're doing, hiding their intentions, pretending to not be a bot and trying to hack APIs or, or, or hack people, uh, people's accounts or, or do phishing attempts. Uh, the fact that it's 37% <laughs> in the bad bot category is insane. Uh, I've got a, I've got a chart here. They put on this report this chart showing the good bots, the bad bots, and the human traffic over the last 10 years. And what you see is that bad bot traffic slowly going up. In 2015, it accounted for 15%. In 2016, it was at 20%. And then it kind of went up and it leveled off and it went up a little bit more. But then you'll notice it steadily goes up. Uh, 2021 is at 28%, then 30%, then 33%. Now it's at 37%. And it keeps, it's, it's accelerating now. <laughs> it went up 4% uh, in terms of the total traffic on the internet as a portion over the last year between 2023 and 2024 holy heavens and then and the amount of good bots right the percentage that are good bots is gone down from 27 percent down to now 14 percent it just keeps getting smaller uh it's this is this is absolutely wild now it, to put this all in, co in context though there have been times in the internet's past where, and we didn't have the exact same measurement number, so it's difficult to say for certain, but where it sure seemed like a majority of the traffic on the internet was from bots of some sort, right? Some sort of automation. And this happened a lot with like email spam, right? Email spam went crazy for a while. Those of you who remember the 1990s, and it seemed like for a period of time that email spam was not just the majority of email, but like the majority of just internet traffic. It was just nonstop. So this, this 
this ratio of human to non-human traffic has been going up and down and up and down for quite some time. Um, but since, and if you look at the chart here, since 2019, the, um, the ratio of human to non-human has been tilting heavily towards non-human every single year, right? The numbers are, are going down of human traffic every single year since 2019. It seemed like we were making headwinds, right? It almost seemed like overall the amount, the percentage that was human traffic was getting, it was increasing from 2015 through 2019. Like it seemed like, hey, things are going okay. Maybe there's a chance, maybe there's a chance that we'll beat this dead internet theory thing after all. But no, no. <laughs> Absolutely didn't happen. Uh, now, where it goes from here, I mean, it it seems like it seems like with uh, how much traffic people are now reporting as coming from AI data mining systems and whatnot, uh, it seems like that percentage is just going to shift even further. I, I wouldn't be surprised if when the 2025 numbers come out, we're down to like 45% of the traffic on the internet is, is human, possibly even less. It really is shifting rather dramatically, uh, heavily because of the AI stuff. I mean, we've been seeing stories after stories of uh of people who running like open source projects and foundations and whatnot who are like jeez there is so much ai data mining traffic coming in that it's it's overwhelming our servers <laughs> right this sort of thing is coming up quite a bit and that seems insane but it's really happening so uh, i i would not be surprised if when the 2025 numbers come out next year if we're like yeah we knew it. <laughs> it's even worse now. Um, a few, a few, a few other little tidbits that I thought were kind of interesting coming out of this report. So a lot of the traffic, uh, at least a good a, a good chunk of it, is uh, bots, you know, automated systems of some sort that are doing API attacks, and and, and you see this <clears throat> rather rather frequently. If you put up a, um, a, a an online database system, a database server like a SQL server or something like that, or a server with uh, some sort of exposed sets of APIs and whatnot, I I saw this because I run a BBS and so there's an open telnet port what what quickly happens is um bots that run uh ip scanners that just run through all of the ip addresses on the internet <laughs> just constantly looking for open ports that they can connect to via uh just you know raw connections http connections telnet ssh all the different types of connections right simple rest connections then they 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 scan through them all and then they start throwing non-stop barrages of hack attempts at those open ports of every kind. Like for example, in the BBS that, that I run, open telnet port comes in. What's amazing is these bots, they don't seem to care that it's a DOS-based BBS, right? It's DOS-based. Uh, so they, they start trying to hack it with every known MySQL hack, Postgres hack, SSH hack, like, like long deprecated hacks. It, these bots just go through lists of hundreds and thousands of known old school, uh, vulnerabilities that are, that are easy to script. And it just starts running through all of them until their IP address gets blocked. <laughs> And then, and then, boom, they spin up another IP address. They do some little IP address masquerading and have their little VPN set up, and they just go through every possible hack iteration. And they do this across all APIs, uh, or across all AP, IP addresses and all APIs that you can imagine across the whole internet constantly. So those API attacks, right, they make up a pretty substantial amount of the total internet traffic. And it's, it's accelerating because the number of, known vulnerabilities continues to increase and the number of p of servers and ip address that are accessible continues to increase so that total amount of traffic it, it keeps increasing as as a percentage of the total traffic um but however if there are known sites that have distinctly valuable information on them, they get the bulk of that bot traffic, right? Uh, like what I'm talking about with my BBS and whatnot is just from the, the low hanging fruit uh, bots that just scan all IP addresses. Now let's say you're a bank and you have, right? You are, you're a big target. 
Well, people are going to specifically focus on you with lots more different types of attacks, far more sophisticated API attacks just, and just larger quantities, because if they can they can break into a bank servers, well, that's far more interesting. And, and you see that in the total amount of traffic dedicated towards something malicious related to APIs um, on the Internet, financial services sites or sites related to financial services, banks and whatnot, account for 40% of all of the bot traffic targeting APIs. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, businesses in general, just business type attacks, account for another 24%. Then it's down to telecoms at 7%. And then it just really trails off quickly after that. The one thing that really surprised me was that computing and IT related sites in general only accounted for 3% of that. I would have expected that to be higher somehow, but I, I suppose maybe they're, they're those those computing and IT related sites tend to be a little better patched. And so the, uh, the, the hackers just like, well, let's focus on the financial one. The other thing I thought that was interesting out of this was all of these bots when they're connecting to a website, they pretend to be a web browser, right? Like, oh, I'm definitely a real person browsing with Firefox today. You can trust me, server. Wink, wink. My user agent is Firefox slash Gecko. <laughs> right? They pretend to be a person using a real web browser. So what browsers do they pretend to use? And I thought I thought this breakdown was kind of interesting. 46% of all bots, this is the largest percentage, pretend to be Google Chrome. That's not really surprising because Google Chrome has the largest market share. But 17% uh, pretend to be mobile Safari, so iOS Safari. Um, uh, another 14% uh, pretend to be mobile Chrome, so Android or iOS Chrome, and then 7% pretend to be Microsoft Edge, um, with 5% pretending to be the Android browser, uh, and 4% Safari. Firefox is down there all the way at 3%, which makes sense because Firefox's actual market share is less than 3%. So what I would like to point out to you is this, and I think this is fascinating. The total, when you look at the total market share of web browsers, Firefox is just a hair over 2%. All of the bad bots, the malicious online traffic, which again accounts for 37% um, of all online traffic, roughly 3% of all of that identifies as Firefox, which means that the fake, totally not real bots, the malicious ones, pretending to be Firefox is actually increasing the total market share of Firefox significantly. Because if they're coming in at 3% and the total overall, which includes the bad bots, is just a hair over 2%, that means more than likely what we're really looking at here is actual Firefox market share being significantly lower than what is being currently reported by all of the market share once you factor in the boost it's getting from the bad bots. That's crazy to me. That's absolutely wild. I, I just, I, 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 don't, uh, I, I don't know what to make of that. I don't know what to make of that. Um, so I, I would have to crunch the numbers to try and see how that all works out. But um, that probably means, I mean, we're looking at, uh, so 37% uh, at 3% uh, for Firefox. So we're probably looking at sub 2% of actual humans using Firefox. Wild wild and it also means that the bad bots be making up uh being only 46 percent desktop chrome is actually probably dragging down the overall chrome market share numbers i'm gonna have to look into this one further because that's abs that's wild that's crazy crazy wild um again though this is insane and the and the real takeaway here is this at this point most traffic on the internet is not human that's nuts that is totally nuts. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for being subscribers to the Lunduke Journal. Go to lunduke.com and click on a bunch of links. You can see I've clicked on a bunch of links. This is just from what I've 
recently reloaded. So this is, uh, this is a whole bunch. You notice I haven't clicked on the Facebook page. I don't really go to my Facebook page much, but if you want to use my Facebook page to watch every episode of the Lunduke Journal, you can. I put them all up there just for good measure. I don't expect many of you to actually use Facebook. It's crazy. I, I publish these shows to Locals, Rumble, X, YouTube, Facebook, Patreon, uh, the Itch MP4 downloads, the podcast RSS feed, Fountains, I, Fountain, iTunes, Substack, and Spotify. And it is all over the map. It is crazy. I'll post a show uh, on one platform that will take off like Game Busters and go crazy viral. On another platform, Total Crickets. <laughs> so I just publish to all these platforms and I, I let all of you choose where you want to watch, where you want to listen. It's up to you. I, I, who am I to judge, right? If you if you like watching the Lunduke Journal stuff on, on Facebook, God bless you. More power to you. If you prefer to watch it on X or Locals or YouTube, uh, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, all the links, though, are up on Lunduke.com. You choose. And with that, uh, by the way, <laughs> I was about to make a joke. It was going to be a little bit too colorful. I'm just not going to make the joke. <laughs> joke amongst yourselves. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes, across the inner tubes, I do declare, man, that would have gotten me in trouble. End broadcast.